It's the old Doctor Who show, episode number 68, uh, Dragonfire. Go forward in all your beliefs and prove to me that I am not mistaken in mine. You couldn't control my mind before, and you certainly can't control it now. Would you like a jerry, Toby? The Charlie's been working properly and capable of many amazing things. Because the polarity of the neutron flows, the TARDIS should be free of the force field. Well, the TARDIS is more than a machine. It's a unit. It's like a person. Resulting reaction is fighting. Are you ready? Welcome back to the old Doctor Who show, your classic tri-weekly Doctor Who review podcast. My name is Eric. And I'm Dan. Yeah, and we're back. Uh, this time, we're literally recording at the very edge uh, of, Edge of eternity uh, of release. This sounds Wait, no, no, so so no, no, no. dirty. Uh, and you made so it dirty, right? Yep. Too. Yeah, we took it's it accurate. to the edge. Uh, normally, we record on a Sunday. Usually, it's morning, Dan. Morning, Eric. Uh, yep. th- we are we are Tuesday night. I can see Dan's wine glass tipping back. Uh, I'm di- uh, you know uh, drowning my sorrows in a Poland Spring seltzer, but it's flavored. Whoa! Because come on, it's nighttime. And when it's nighttime, it's the right time. So, Dan, how are you? I'm doing great. I'm I'm uh, excited for the fact that we're doing this nearly live. Yeah, we're going to be recording this and putting it right up onto the interwebs. So. Yeah, normally I do a fair amount of editing, uh, and <laughs> I don't want to do it. Bad before uh, that was cleaned up. So let's yeah. see what happens right. with the so live this, version. This here. is going to be pretty much raw, so we can't screw up. We gonna we're gonna have jumping to right get into it. Right. it. Is there anything we want to hit at the top of the show yes. before we dive in? Oh, please. Yes. What do you no, got for me? No, I would just say I would just want to do a brief uh, check-in with you to see what you think of. Because well, the last time we talked, three weeks ago, we had just seen the premiere and two maybe epi- I had the seen second two episode. You hadn't seen the second one. Okay, yet. I hadn't We'd seen the second the one, but you had seen. There's only been two. Yep. Now there's been a number of them. I will yep. say we won't spoil anything. I myself yep. haven't seen... Uh, what would have been last I didn't see Sundays? Sundays yep. Yet missed it. I was just wondering if you still liked it because we were both, I think, very positive on it. From what I remember. Yeah. No, I think I'm done with Doctor Who. I'm, oh, I'm over it. Not my Doctor. Controversial. Bo, bo, bo. Is that true, or are you just being? No, a... no. I think it's great. I think I, I still, I still enjoy it. Um, oh, I just for a second, we got very uh, uh, edgy. They're going back yeah. to edgy because because it's funny because uh, I'm going to go off on a tangent, uh, no but good. normally I spend a lot of time watching uh, interviews with members of the Wu Tang Clan. <laughs> this is true. Is I do a lot of this stuff and, and I true. generally like uh, uh, hip hop, so I watch a lot of that. And, and YouTube's <laughs> usually like, "Hey, check out this thing. Hey, you're going to like this." And then all of a sudden, it figured out I like Doctor Who, and it started sending me, "Hey, you might like this," and I fell into this dark abyss today of just youtube videos of dudes that are so angry at third i've never heard the words third wave feminism more uh but Mm. they just rant over these still images from like the bbc of publicity (laughs) photos of doctor who like going insane of this uh, this indoctrination of the BBC and and SJW like all this crap that oh, sort of geez. is in wow. comics and video games and now it's like yeah. there's this whole thing with Doctor Who and this anger over the not just because she's a like everyone always is like listen I don't care if it's a woman I, or if if it's a minority of some kind but it has to make sense for the story like that's like the the they right. open with the that. couch it to make it yeah right yeah because right. somehow the default has to be the default has to be a straight white dude and then anything else like that and then it's constantly like assuming you know the why the creator of the thing or the writer of the thing made the choice that they did and they're so proud of themselves but it's insane it's insane so I How take long? it after watching those episodes now you oh. feel that way right because you had oh. you had hashtagged it not my doctor. Uh, and so, yeah. I mean, that's horrifying. That's 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 really upsetting. It's I mean, cra- it's crazy because it's crazy the amount of videos there are. Like, yeah, it's and they all have way more subscribers than we'll ever have. That's and, what I was going to uh, ask you. A so larger it, audience than my writing will ever reach. And so there's right. a little bit of like, oh God, what is what am I doing? Um, yeah, what are you doing wrong? I think. Yeah, but the thing is like garbage cells, and you know you can. 
I mean, if we just sat here and trashed oh. something, we'd probably do better than if we actually gave it a. So do you want to sit here and trash things? Instead? No, Is I don't that? want. I think it's stupid. I just I can't imagine I how sad your life must be to force yourself to watch because they don't like any like this. At least hate one guy hates every yeah. episode, like hates it. And we'll be like, and here she is. She's not using the right accent, and she can't act. And like, okay, you don't like the couple. You give it a couple a chance. You know, you give a couple of stories a chance, and then you go watch something else because there's a billion other things. But you should just watch something over and over and get angrier and angrier and spend all this time imagining what you think the other person did and why they made the choice that they did. And and he was ranting to this one person, I don't even remember who it was, about how there was no opening in the first one and how that's, you know, horrible for Doc. It's like, you know, we talked about it. I came away with that being like, oh, that was so cool structurally. She doesn't know right she's in. the doctor. Yep. Yeah. And then yeah. when she finds out she's the doctor, the actual show starts. I thought that was cool. Yeah. But for him, he saw it as... You know, them turning the tape, like destroying Doctor Who, and that was their intention. It was like, well, that's the thing, Eric. That uh, Doctor Who was hanging on by a thread, and if you screw with anything, the whole thing's going to fall apart. And it's apart. all these veiled threats of like all alienating the audience, and the audience is going to leave. It's just, I don't know. And it's never been a stronger audience yeah, than it is right now. So it, it's, it's all this, this perverse hate watching where they get um, <laughs> satisfaction and pleasure out of the anger that they generate is horrifying. Yeah, and that, I think there's. Right. Because, I mean, I there are. Listen. We've re-reviewed dozens and dozens. Of, what are we up to? Like sixty-seven episodes now, more. And some I don't like, some I do like, but I enjoy the enjoy the creative process of what they're doing. Why would I spend this amount of time just no, being you, angry yeah, about really a thing? It. And I get it. Horrible. I mean, there's like you 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 do release endorphins when you watch yeah. stuff that you hate because you get angry, and then it you know your but you start it's to get on the feedback adrenaline loop. thing and that yeah. happens yeah. i mean you can watch you know anger watch whether it's politics or whatever and you'll oh, get don't. you know you just what you know so yeah. there is sort of a and there's also sort of like a self congratulatory thing that you figured out that why it's broken and whatever and it's fine and i like to make fun of things too don't get me wrong i just found the breadth of uh, of content about that disturbing because there was i assume it's just like a little bit here and there but the fact that these people are pouring hours and hours into it and the fact that youtube's like hey you want to check this out that's what exactly i was going to say it's the fact that the algorithm now will start pushing these things towards you when it's probably i'm hoping a small fractional minority of the overall content that's talking about this topic so but it's going to keep pushing that at you because that's the thing that's going to generate the outrage and get generate the clicks. And now you've watched a few, so it's like, oh, you must like it. So here's more of this crap we're going to shovel down your throat. Where it just it, that's that is that horrible yeah. feedback loop, and you lose all perspective of the fact that actually this show is doing better than it's ever done before. The audience is bigger. It's it's growing the entire universe of the story uh, of of the of, yeah the, the universe of around the story, and there's more people that love it than don't. But yeah, you can't now, go and like a lot of those views too. But how many how many people watching some of some of this stuff are people that don't agree with it that are watching it to get mm. the same endorphin release right, of watching right, something right. they hate? And yeah. we're all the same. We're all garbage it's people. Like, yeah, I'm, like, That's, I mean, I, how, I'm, I'm sorry mean, I'm it took though. us here, Dan. I wanted to know what you thought of the new show. <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> I actually, I will I say, like I, I like think it. it started off really strong, and it, I'm, it's, a, it's not as good. I think the last couple that I've seen, and I like it in pieces. Like I feel like it's very good in, in moment the, to the moment. The parts is of good. it are really good. Like there's really yeah. good scenes between characters and yeah. very cool like uh, interpersonal development and stuff. But as a whole, like those little scenes, I don't necessarily like how they work as a whole story. If I can definitely sense. see. No, I, I 100% see where you're coming from. Um, from moment to moment, it's good. There are. I think the production design is is really solid throughout. The moments with different characters are great. But the thing is, there are more characters at the beginning of a new Doctor than we've ever had before. At the beginning of a new showrunner than we've had before. So I feel like I'm going to give them more leeway, because I'm so generous, um, to figure out where they want to go with this. There's just a lot to do when you set up a new showrunner and a new Doctor coming on board. Plus, how what's the tone going to be? How's it all going to fit together? And honestly... 
every season is uh, hit or miss from story to story. I think this is consistently good, but it does have a lot of internal parts that just don't quite hang together. But I, 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 I like what I, I think it has a lot of potential. So I'm very excited about it. And I really like Jodie Whittaker in the role. The one thing I don't like is that she's a woman. No, that um, <laughs> the way, the way, no, the way she uh, it's just so minor, but it just bugs me every time when she pulls out the Sonic and aims it at a thing. It's a full arm motion, the big sweeping gigantic motion point to get the thing. That just bugs me. That's literally my major that's quibble with like. the show. I didn't nothing. like the. the I yeah, I don't want to talk about details I think of the show. Great. I was going to say something, but nope. But I do again for my thing. I, I like how these little sort of scenes. I just don't feel like you. Sometimes you have a really nice scene between two characters that makes sense, but it doesn't. It's not connected at all to the overall plot of that story. It sometimes they're in positions where you're like, well, okay, you got six minutes to do X. You guys are having this discussion now. Okay, well, I guess. Like, okay. there's like those kind of things where I feel like the overall story structure of the thing is weak. I think a yeah. lot of the times, or it feels like okay, here's another monster of the week type thing. That's it's fine, a lot of that, but it yes. gets like I don't know. The last two for me, I didn't see the last one, which I don't remember what the name of it is. But there was like the one conundrum something or other on the which was like ship, an yeah. alien thing, but yeah. it was sort of cute. But no one acknowledged that it was cute, and it was kind of weird, and the whole thing. Kind of had a that weird worked. resolution, okay. and the the one that I thought was good with the spiders, except the Trump thing, was super on the nose. Too on the nose, and they yeah. even said Trumps. Like it was like that. I found that to be okay. Yeah, yeah. Very we're, we're heavy-handed. About these I and and I've said a million times. I am I am less into the creature of the week. This is true of like X Files, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, all the stuff. I I like the the mythos more. So I'm hoping that we're gonna get. I want to see what. This new kind of era of the show is going to do with the mythology of it because I feel like the previous showrunners have kind of put us into weird corners, and I want to see how we kind of deal with all of that. So, speaking I'm of weird corners, uh, oh. let's talk about one of the weirdest corners, which is the dark side of the planet. Uh, uh, that's that where the corner? ice capades are from. Oh. <laughs> Can we space space capades? Uh, so let's get off of that uh, other stuff. And Rant. get on the the older, newer stuff, right. uh, and hit the button, and then we okay. will go into the machine, into the TARDIS, and we will go uh -huh. back in time. Wait, then what happens? That's forward in time, and yep. we'll go to the ice capades, ice planet, ice uh, dragon fire. Button time. <laughs> <laughs> you so certain this map's pedigree is 24 carat? Because I acquired it from a man of character and distinction. How? I won it in a chess match. You won it playing cards. Doctor, it's a waste of time. He won it in a card game. An honest transaction. The man was desperate not to lose this map, so I know it's something very, very tasty. It shows the lower levels of Ice World. Well, no one goes down there anymore. Too dangerous. The ice garden, the singing trees. But like <laughs> the girl says, Doctor, it's too dangerous. Where's your sense of adventure glitz? What, do, you, do you want to go here? The, the Lake of Oblivion? Where? Death of Eternal Darkness? Oh. Dragon Fire? <laughs> I should stop at home if I were you, Doctor. Oh, this sounds brill. My sentiments precisely. What's your name, incidentally? Everyone calls me Ace. Oh, how do you do? I'm the Doctor, and this is my friend, Mel. And we're really going to go looking for dragons? Too risky, if you ask me. Nonsense, Glitz. Time for a quick adventure, then back for tea. Ace, that's the spirit, Doctor. Hang about. You can't go without me. That's my map. And I don't want these girls coming along either. What? It's too dangerous. Professor. And since it's my map... Right. You male chauvinist bilge bag. Just you wait. Oh. All right. This is Dragonfire. This is the fourth serial, Dan. No, the fourth and final serial uh, yes. of the 24th season of, of <sighs> Doctor Who from November... 1987. I guess it was November uh, or December 1987. So we're nearing the end of a de of a decade. The 80s yeah. are coming uh, almost to an end, and so is this season. And uh, in this story, which was written by Ian Briggs, who we've seen last story, I believe he wrote, yep. and directed by Chris Clow. You know Chris Clow. 
He know he can talk about Chris Clow. All right, uh, everyone can talk about Chris. Yep. Clow. And this in this story, the Doctor <laughs> and Mel find their way to a shopping planet that is also a, <laughs> it's also a cold planet, uh, I think. Uh, and wow. there they meet some new friends uh, like Ace and some old Ace. friends. Uh, like Sabalon Blinks, who has an MC Search Blitz? style fade, isn't it? Blinks, Blinks, Blitz. Sa- it's Sabalon something or other, but he's got an MC Search style fade uh, where they've got third base. It was written uh, into the back of his head. Soon enough, they end up on a treasure hunt uh, for a fabled dragon and its treasure, while an evil criminal mastermind pulls the strings in the background. Uh, or something or other. Uh, that yeah. that is a dragon fire. Uh, yeah. What did you think of Sylvester McCoy's outing uh, in Dragon Fire, Dan? Hmm. I don't know if I have an overall sense of a. I couldn't give this one Breaking. a letter grade if, if, I, if I were to say. It. I think we're gonna have to. I think we have to walk through this bit by bit because there was a lot to like in this. I liked um, Savalon Glitz in this. Um, I, I particularly liked him with Sylvester McCoy. I think the two of them had a lot of funny, like, well, attempted humor with the the comedy duo d- they, they were doing before. Um, we have a lot going on because we have the introduction of uh, <laughs> we have the introduction of a new companion. We have the exit of a companion that we barely got to know, um, and there was just a lot of references to other science fiction properties throughout this that were really distracting so and and a, and a villain who i'm not quite sure I, I understand exactly what his motivation was uh there was a lot going on let's just let's just talk through it what what did you think of this well, thing I, I i want you to tell me how i feel I'm kind of i'm kind of right where you are i feel like okay. this shouldn't work but it kind of does kind of does but yeah. it's also a t- kind of a disaster like i don't when even you start thinking like, about when you start thinking about individual moments, there I have a few listed here. They don't make sense. <laughs> like, there's literally no reason why certain things happen, or even there's no reason. There's no way certain things could happen. Well, like if but, you if you were gonna take a super criminal and put him yeah. in jail, mm-hmm. would you would you give him the key to get out of jail on that planet, or just yeah. keep the key on your own planet? No, and then he won't a... get it from the dragon that is no, chasing. No, Robo, Although, Robo you know, Dragon is the safest way to do it. But the thing is, it kind of makes sense in that the jailer, the robot yeah. dragon, is there, Dan. Because the moment he changes and serves his time and understands that he's done wrong, he will find redemption. And then the beautiful golden uh, dragon's head would open would have opened and then yeah. his way home and it would have said you you figured it out you've you're yeah. redeemed redemption I and the see. rain would come down uh. like a bucket in, in flash dance and he would do the, the <laughs> head back and they would dance and it would be wonderful but sadly that doesn't happen he spends that didn't happen. he spends no. the time just branding young girls that's what he yeah. hey you have a 14 year old when did i meet you i was like 14 give me your arm and he brands them <laughs> with his weird mark and they're who are these people like is it there, it's a shopping planet that was started out as a prison. It's a space planet. mall. Well, it was yeah, a prison they, thou, three thousand yes. years ago. Yes, and then who developed it into the sky mall? Well, place. he had a lot of time, so he got his real estate license. <laughs> um, he was a commercial developer and created a spaceport on an ice planet. But there's no other like there's no no How one else is running the thing? planet. Like there's no right. police or or uh, yeah. you know, public works. Well, it's him and his. Well, his his yes. So, but he's his still minions. branding them like they're again, like like they don't know if they are a underground black market gang that's you know uh, operating under you know under the nose of whoever the proper president is. But they're they're, they're not that. They're also they're not that right. The government. They are the authority there. Except there's a beautiful girl, uh, princess girl who drinks a milkshake after everyone is slaughtered. You remember that scene? Like the guys yeah, come yeah, in, yeah. they start it killing, was, and the bodies are piling up. And then she—I actually—that's probably one of my favorite moments <laughs> was a great in the moment. entire story because everything got real dark. He <laughs> blew up a ship full of yes. civilians, and everybody she's dies. Just hanging, and we don't know at that point. There's no one else survived. She 
at that moment, she's the only person on the entire planet. Until her mom them. comes later. But we, we, we don't know that at that time. Oh, at that time, yeah. At the time. So she's just hanging out drinking all the ice cream that uh, milkshakes that she wants to. Well, there's dead bodies. No, it was and, dark and delightful. And a hat tip to Chris Clow for taking the time <laughs> to show that scene and not the scene where for some reason the doctor climbs down a cliff and just hangs there because he gets caught. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> does I don't. That doesn't I've make this, any sense. I watched that twice because I don't get what was. Okay. Should we just jump through? All right. Do you well, want to hit that? I, do I don't even want to get there. I don't, how do I don't do even this? want to get there because in the okay. beginning, did you notice <laughs> that the space police or underground gang or whoever sure. who are working for the bad guy, when they, they find uh, Glitz, is it, what's his name, man? I can't, it's Glitz. Sabalon Glitz. Like, Glitz. When they find Glitz old and Glitzy yeah. and his- Glitz face. Yep. And he's sitting there. Does she not know her lines? Because it seems like she's reading her lines off a cue card. Who Ace or Matt? no 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 the 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 woman that is the uh, police or oh, I don't know what oh, her role is no but well, she's okay. not quite we like, should talk about her too but she, no she's she's doing she looks this like weird, she's looking off staring screen. into middle distance I think it's cue cards no, I don't know I think it, it looks like an out. SNL bit you know like yeah, like it's like yeah, half the time she when she knows the line she'll look at the other right. actor when but the then guest she's host drawn. is sort of reading yeah, but drawn. sort of looking yeah no. No, because I think it's this thing – I've seen this a lot, especially in this show, but I've seen it uh, elsewhere. Where it's a very stagey thing where you'll come you know, downstage and do a half turn to the audience and speak forward, as, and but you're actually talking to the person behind. They do this all the time. It, just, it feels very stagey and theatrical and false in the moment, and she's staring off in this middle distance. I know exactly what you mean. She's not connecting with anyone that's there. She's just being – you know, a quote unquote like authoritarian and just kind of pronouncing things. Yeah, you see, I but it doesn't. To it me, it's weird. Felt, yeah, to me, it felt more like she was reading cue cards off. Well, off but I don't think she would. Screen. She's a very professional actress. We know who she is. Yes. Who is she? She is Magenta from Rocky Horror Picture Show. Oh, see, I've seen that movie maybe once or twice. Who is Magenta? I've seen that movie many, many times. Yeah, see, I'm I not didn't there with her you at all. Patricia Quinn. I didn't. I didn't recognize her at all. It was actually. We'll read the uh, the responses and thank you guys in advance for all your responses. Um, uh, mentioning that's who that was because I would have had no idea that that's who, that that was Magenta, and I will shall refer to her as Magenta throughout because I can never remember the name of the character, which is Blaz. Whatever. All right. Anyway, no. So I I think it was a choice. I don't think it was that she <laughs> couldn't remember the lines. <laughs> that's but, how I read it. Hey, whatever. Because we Either that's way. the same woman that we see later, right? That's the big part yeah. who just wants a spaceship. She's had the uh, little canoodling with uh, Kane. In yeah, the past. but she because yeah. yeah. she doesn't do that later. That's why I no, thought right. like, okay, well, this scene she just was didn't know her lines, and they she were like, had we had just have to gotten shoot cast, her. and they put her into a costume. Yeah. and got her right onto set. It was all three minutes, right. and she had no time to learn so, her lines. So, Maybe. Uh, so she's Maybe. working for Mr. Kane. We also yes. in this scene yeah. early on get to meet a new Ace for the first time. Right and away, we get thrown right into it. We know her name is Ace. Because she says Ace a lot. A lot. And her jacket says Ace, Ace in case she's walking away and you forget. And they're like, what do you call you? You know, what do they call you? Ace. And then she throws the Ace out a couple of times. And that yeah. was painful. <laughs> I, I <laughs> hope she continues to be called Ace, but I hope she never yes. says Ace again. I have a feeling she's going to say Ace a lot. See, I, I think it's probably I over. Know. I feel like they'll probably – she'll – Keep making explosives. And I do like a lot of the, you know, that 80s idea of future slang, like where, you know, no, people are shortening real, words or something that you don't this think. This was all real slang. Yeah. This was all real slang. This was all, you know, brill and all. I mean, this was like <laughs> current at the time slang from what I understand. I Ace is interesting. Let's 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 go back even further because we're, oh, we're going to this all the way thing. back. Oh, you gotta, should we open at the beginning? Uh, the with the the, the drama, the drama of the uh, the entire crew that the got crew sold that's getting paid to yeah. get put in. Why are they getting paid at all? No, they're not getting paid. They were getting th yeah, they were getting like seventeen no. Uh, no space bucks. Remember, he's like we're yeah, each getting no, space I know what you're talking about. space Eric, bucks. Totally and then you missed he, the point, it, buddy. You missed the point. What is the point? The point is they were sold to Kane for that amount of money. They're not. He's not paying them. Kane purchased. Oh them. right, okay. And, that makes and, it. And it turns out later 
they were Glitz's crew, and Glitz, yeah, Glitz sold, sold his them all crew out to Cade. Yeah, yeah they were getting paid. He that sold was, them all out, but I thought that they slavery. were getting paid. And then right. it was like seventeen crowns isn't enough to feed a dog. a dog. And the other yeah. guys like I wouldn't have paid seventeen for all of you. For what? I yeah, assume for, they were getting yeah. the money in exchange no. for being these cryogenically frozen it's zombie mercenaries who their memories assassin. go away. Unless yeah. the memory's really bad, like it, yeah. there's all that extra it's stuff silly. in this that goes nowhere. It wasn't necessary. The, the mercenary zombies don't ever do anything other than well, at one point they get out, right? But not. It's like you know, it's over in it a wasn't few a minutes. Big, it's not a big. Yeah, it wasn't a big deal big at all. Thing. All right, so and somehow so I thought they, they become, got paid. You're saying they didn't get paid? They no, were they sold. Got sold they got sold in, which was 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 an interesting thing way to start it off. Um, we get introduced to the fact that it's a an ice planet and that there's vats of liquid nitrogen yeah, everywhere. everywhere. I don't under okay. It doesn't Again, make any small sense. Small things. It doesn't make any sense. It's liquid nitrogen, so it's sitting there in open containers, which means it's just going to sublimate into vapor. So it's either constantly needing to be refilled for no reason because it's just a big vat that's doing nothing. Or it's really freaking cold in there to keep it from melting and turning into vapor. In which case, they must all be freezing because they're just wearing light jackets the entire time. Well, yeah, but we don't, I don't know. understand. Right. Fair, what's fair point. Him. I mean, he I has to keep with it the temperature cold. the whole time. He has to keep going. Right. So he has to keep his body cold. He keeps, Kane has to keep going into this chamber. Because it's not even cold enough for him that he has to go into a <sighs> chamber. Chamber. Why does he have to stay cold? So. That's a great question. We, we find out from the archivist later that he was sent to this planet because it has a dark side that is always facing away from the sun, so yeah. it's cold, so, maybe, so he can survive. Ma- yeah, so, so their whole race is an ice be, race of some kind. Must be ice, ice. In, in a very Superman 1-esque uh, crystal scene where, you know, Jarrell's going to be out there. It was the uh, uh, Fortress of Solitude. Yeah. Totally ripped that also off. Also cold, uh, also as, cold it, as it were. Yeah. Um, okay, oh, so then, so then the hot. the one one of the mercenaries breaks out yep. very easily, very easily. Gets a gun. I think he maybe he sh- he shoots somebody or he tries to shoot somebody. No, he, I can't remember. He shoots at them. He pushes. He knocks someone out. Grabs their gun. Pushes them over. Shoots at them and goes into the oh. forbidden zone. Yeah, he goes into the part of the the. He goes into the video store with the the drapes that you're not supposed to walk by where the really uh, adult films are. And he yep. he goes back there and he finds that old creepy dude who's just chiseling away at the Ice Queen, right? And then gets hand murdered uh, by the old cold hands. Right, well, he got, to, he got to gaze upon his creation as he got murdered. So it was actually kind of poetically just... So yeah, dumb. no, it was it was weird. <laughs> okay, so he goes he goes he goes off into the forbidden zone and yeah, uh, the Great. queen. By the way, we learn later, and as you talk about how this is kind of a dark episode, yeah, uh, she had committed suicide. A detail not necessary necessary oh. for the story, but a little oh. a little kind of little uh, richness, I think, a little yeah. little layer on that onion of sadness. Uh, she that didn't want to get captured, so she yeah, uh, so she, she killed, killed herself. herself. And then he's just trying to make the the ice sculpture, and then he. I know this is later, but when they make the plot to kill him, yeah, and he's in the his cryogen or his sleep chamber, whatever it is. I don't think he's cryogenically getting Free, put freeze down. mobile. He's being yep. freeze raid, freezified. Uh huh. And they hit, oh, they hit the uh, novelty size slider just to go down into the red, so you know it's getting hot. <laughs> Why don't they yep. just lo- put a padlock on it or Eric, hold it down? Eric. He, he literally stands there no, with he his thought arms. Ahead. He has his arms this at guy. his side when he gets caught. He doesn't move. He planned the entire planet. <laughs> he knew that one day someone would want to padlock him in. So he's like, you know what? No padlocks. The entire Did you see padlocks anywhere? But no. the guy doesn't even <laughs> try to run. He's no. like, oh, it's awful hot here. Well, my that's statue why. He was, is melting, and the guy just they cut to him, and his arms are at the side, and he's like, "Am I on my mark? Am I going to get?" Am I, am am I gonna get am and then he gets hand murdered. Yep, that was so dumb. Like, yeah, they tried <laughs> though. They tried valiant effort to to murder Kane. Oh God, right, that's what so, I mean. Like this, this, this story is terrible. 
but I actually it's, was like, oh, this but it was is enjoyable. Kind of, this is kind of cool. enjoyable, but terrible at the same time. It's weird. So um, I, you know, we don't do any reading ahead. We try to be as <laughs> as ill informed as possible before watching this. Did you know Glitz was coming back? I had no. Clue no, I had Glitz no idea. Was back. Yeah, that was, that was it. Was nice. a nice surprise. I didn't love Glitz in the previous stories. I thought it was fine. Um, but you know, I saw him. and I was like, oh, this is this is actually kind of fun to get to see him and. Um, Mel and the Doctor, the, the a new Doctor to him this time. Um, so that was kind of fun. It's hard to get a read on him because they treat him like an old friend who yes. sells people. He's right? Like, a great guy. He's not a good person. No. It's not like he's just running some Ponzi. Well, that's even worse. It's not worse, but it's bad. Like, it's not that he's just like no, but that he's would a be schemer. Better. He's not like he's not just like a schemer where he's just like trying to skim off the top and trying to you know uh, play it fast and loose with the rules. No, he is selling people into servitude. Like yeah. he is They're full like, on the worst hey, person you could be. Like yeah, kids like Han Solo, right? Yeah. Well, what if he was a slave trader? Like that part doesn't come up. You know what I mean? Like there's a fine line. Was that in the first between draft? Between roguish uh, and uh, you know. Dickish, completely, I don't know. Dickish is completely a morally word. corrupt. Yeah, that he sold people. Yeah, he sold his yeah, but own they were, friends. But they were jerks. They were a mutiny against him. So and then they, they had get it coming, murdered. I guess. All the they all yeah. get killed later. Yeah, after yeah. they get he their and he didn't, uh, he memories shed erased. No tears. Shed no tears. About yeah, so it's it's hard to sort of figure out like well how you how, how you we feel, to feel about him. Well, no, it's like. But I guess in this world it's okay. It's all like you know. No, but it's not a. You piece tussle of the his doctor. hair. You tussle his hair. You you rub your fingers in his uh, shaved stripes or whatever he's got yeah. on the side. Whatever he's. Got, I don't understand. Going on. I I really that that bothers me maybe more than anything else. Honestly, because the doctor goes around trying to right wrongs across the entire universe, and yet this guy, this yeah, this should be the enemy. This should be the guy that he's trying to stop. Is Glitz. He sold people. It's, it's it is a weird choice that they made in this one to try to make him likable, and they have all these little buddy yeah. moments. Now, of like perhaps a physical he didn't comedy. sell the people out. Maybe he just sold them out by saying where they were or something. No, and he not actually for talks much, about yeah. the price, and he said that he didn't even. He thought it was they they overpaid. He thought they weren't even worth that much. Ugh. It's terrible. Yeah, he's horrible. But he's they do have – he, he he has a ship which has a very cool name, the, the Nosferatu. The Nos- I like that. That he won in a, ga- a poker game, right? He says he played chess. Okay. Um, so, well, no, he won. He won the map in. in oh yeah, you're right. Chess, right. Yep. yep. Okay. I was so, mixing so up the, my Han Solo and my. Yes. Uh, uh, Plex, but yes, you're right. He won this map that is the location of the treasure. Do you want to just talk about Solo, a Star Wars story instead? Yeah, or? let's do, okay, it. We'll do it. Gets better um, as it goes. So there's so there's a poker game that is rigged where. It is, oh, uh, God, Kane has yes. rigged it so that so that Glitz is going to lose all of his money, so that he's indebted to him, but that he's also going to win a map, so that he can go and find this treasure in order to pay Kane back, which is a very convoluted. Well, because and Kane it, wants the treasure, get it, because totally. he knows what the treasure is yes. somehow. He knows sure. it's somehow going to power guesses. his ship to get off because they yes. were. At, I, ma- I imagine at trial during sentencing, they said, "And you will be forever pursued by this dragon, which right. has your way out and freedom in its head." If right. you ever want to come a really back good and kill defender. us all, yeah, yeah, it doesn't. So, so, doesn't make so, sense. but so he he the poker match was rigged so he would lose all of his money and yet win a thing that he thinks is very valuable, which is the map. But they know that he's not going to then keep on gambling and just gamble the map. And why did he sell his crew? I mean, he does owe money. Well, they were mutant. But the, they were the, the debt was part of the reason for him to search for the treasure. Yeah. So he, they didn't really need the Well, he piece. sold the crew, and then he just he just wasted the did money. Did he sell he the says, crew before or after the poker game? I don't know we because don't know. when we first meet yeah. Magenta, she's asking about the money that he got for selling the crew, and he basically says that he wasted it all. Yeah, I can't remember. So maybe that was after the poke because he has the map. He's not a good guy. So you were listening to, <laughs> to like plot details, and I was. I was. Like, I'm sorry. I think there's my a bad. Key card. I wonder if I bet if I look hard enough, I'll see the piece of the cue card right on screen. Right. <laughs> Did yeah. you catch the boom in the shot? Um, yeah. No. I mean, okay. All right, it so just didn't make sense. Yeah. And it, and it, but again, again, 
all of these problems didn't detract from the fact that I actually enjoyed myself. Okay, so we meet Ace. We're in the we're in the <laughs> right. Who's a waitress who who dumps a in, milkshake? Where is she? What's she's that? a waitress in she's the a cantina. terrible waitress. <laughs> yes, but she's in, in the star, the Star Wars cantina, except it's a kind soda of. shop. Yeah. It's well, a I mean, sweet there's creatures shop. everywhere. Yeah. There's someone dressed entirely in silver. Someone dressed entirely in gold. They have a Greedo. They have it. It is that's what they're doing. Right. That is ob- and thank you again, Twitter, for that pointing that out. But that is obvious and exactly what they're yeah, going for. Yeah, it's a for. cantina, but it's a sweet shop. But I don't like shop. you, but I like your double <laughs> chocolate, whatever. Um, and then he cuts his arm. But off. she's a terrible waitress. Then she should be fired, no matter what, because she messes yeah. she messes the order up, or she dumps a. The well, milkshake on you no know, the customer's head. Yeah, yeah. And then she, she goes off, and then she's she's like, "Oh, give me another." Ch-. Like, she should immediately know I she's won't going let it to be fired. Again. I won't let it happen again. And we learn when we hear about her backstory, she comes from years of waitressing. Like that was well, her not that many years. thing in she the past. A, yeah, when she was on Earth, I mean, she she's should only know 16. better. But then she's, she's surprised though that she's going to be fired so much that then she dumps the. Uh, the milkshake, milkshake onto- on the guys and he's just trying to run yeah. a business a sweet shop in space he can't have she's an anarchist workers. dude she's she's a socialist workers rights man the yeah she's, um she's an anarchist Dan. what did you think of ace when we first meet her i mean knowing the fact like okay so coming into this i knew that there was a companion coming up whose name was ace literally all i knew was female named ace did not any, know anything else, and so when we meet this waitress who is clearly named Ace because she keeps saying it, yeah. I was not expecting that at all. Do I think this any? is my reaction. Her jacket is too big. I think the jacket <laughs> is too big. I hope by the next uh, story it, they it bring it in a little a bit. Fitted, a fitted jacket. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a little too big for my liking with with all the patches and stuff. I like the patches. Um, I just wish it was a little smaller. Uh, no, I, I knew what she looked like. So when I saw I, the actress, I was like, oh, here's Ace. And I, I no idea. find it, again, I didn't like the, the catchphrasing Ace. Ace! They were but I do hard. like her so far. I mean, she seems interesting. She's always, you know, she seems like, they seem to like characters that have bags full of stuff. Like, that's yeah. always a thing. Yeah. Um, and we saw the last companion that was nearly a companion that wasn't a companion. In the last story, where she had mm. like wrenches coming out, so instead right. of wrenches, now we have explosives, and she knows how a- to make. and a ladder. Yeah, she's got a ladder, so she's got all that. So I like that. Yeah, I like the fact that she is dumping milkshakes on people. I, mean, I went through that whole thing, but I, it oh. makes her kind of interesting. So I, I like that. I like it. Jumping ahead a little bit when when we see there when they decide to go following after the guys who are going looking for the dragon. Um, and they encounter the dragon for the first time, and it shoots laser beams at them. Yep. Ace's first reaction is, "This is awesome." Yeah. She doesn't say and that. Mouse but she's like, screams. she's excited about it. Like this is an adventure, and that's that is really a nice change from previous companions who shall not be named, who would just scream and fall and twist their ankle. Right. Well, she's you, like actually in it, and like yeah, and you go. you get a perfect sort of side by side of that because you yes. have her doing that, and then you have Mel going Mel. into the screaming horror movie tape. Yep. Yep. I think it was a really nice contrast of the two. Uh, I feel really bad for Mel because they really played that contrast up um, and just made her even more so than she always had been. Um, not that we've really seen. I haven't really grown attached to Mel because we've seen her in you know just a handful of stories and none were as good as the first time we saw her. So. I'm not terribly sad to see her go, but we'll we'll get to we'll we'll get to. Yeah, I feel. Later, I, I mean, guess, we, we'll cover her at the end. Now, yeah, because yeah. it's her last story. Um, but yeah, so I liked I liked. Um, who were we, were we talking about? Oh, Ace. What, what shows this? Yes, I Ace. liked Ace. Right. Um, okay. So so it seems good. I did not quite understand. Well, I, I mean, I, I I didn't understand that why they did what they did. Where all of a sudden it was like, all right, let's go on this treasure hunt, and then they were like, dudes only. And then yeah. it was like, all right. Like, it was like, <laughs> them splitting up doesn't make a lot of sense. Like, why is he leaving Mel alone anyway as the doctor? Like, why? Well, Mel Their said it's split okay. Up seems it's the a doctor didn't odd. really leave her behind. The, Mel said, you go ahead. It was Glitz who was saying he didn't want the women to come. And I don't know if that was because he didn't want the women to come or he wanted fewer people to be there because he wants the treasure for himself and well, he thinks he might need the doctor's help. Yeah, but it he, was Mel that said, you go ahead, doctor. If it's the only, She was basically saying, if it's the only way that Glitz is going to let us go along, you go and I'll hang out here with 
And Glitz, Glitz reveals his plan later on, where he's like, oh, here's the thing. I don't even remember what his plan is, but he's sitting next I to the doctor, know. remember? And he's like, they the don't know. And, and the whole time, the map is bugged. So yeah. there's like a listening device on the map. So they're listening back at on Tracking their headphones. The whole time. Uh, but what yep. was what was what was Glitz's plan? Do you remember? Know. It he, was he knew he that to get money. There wasn't a treasure. So like what was his thing? Because he was like, you know, I'm gonna do this, and then I'm gonna steal my ship. Like, didn't he say like he wanted he, the ship back? He sort of was just gonna get his ship and leave and not get the treasure. That was his plan, wasn't it? Yes, he wanted he wanted to go back and and try to get the Nosferatu again. I don't but I don't think he, think he even. But he had thought the map the whole time, it? so he was going to try to get the treasure. But he didn't really think it was possible because of all this, all these different places underneath the surface. Uh, I don't. I don't know. It's, it's all fine. It's, it's all fine. good. It's fine. Uh, then we have the uh, character that the woman who what's her name from uh, Magenta. Magenta. Well, not really Magenta, who but sure. just Magenta. wants to get off the planet too, and so she's trying to get the Nosferatu and. He won't let her go, and then we get we we are introduced to the branding aspect of their S and M relationship. Yeah, and as she sort of has a story hand. arc building. Like you think, okay, well, is she going to become a good person, or is she going to do something? And she doesn't, right? I mean, right? I don't even remember well, what happens to her. Does she get well, laser? She gets hand killed. No, she gets hand killed. Right. So there's like all of this stuff with her and her back dealing and whether he's going to find out or not. And right. I felt so like that doesn't mute, go anywhere. She's the one that tries to, to get the Yeah, she orchestrates the game. assassination. Yes. But uh, that's it. Because she just wants to she doesn't to escape, get caught for can't. that, does she? Yeah. He catches he gets, catches the guy and kills get, her. And yeah. then he comes back. But I don't remember yeah. him killing her he right away. He kills her. He hand kills he her. He hand killed her right the away. Second episode. Yeah, second episode. She's only in the first two story, two, two parts of the story. All right, I got to pay more attention because murdered. I thought that she got killed a little bit later. I mean, it was a, it was not a, related to him figuring out later. he tried to kill her. It was not much later than that. So, right. as far as I can remember, it wasn't that much. Well, my point was, it seemed like they were they were doing something with her character. You know, she was just a little girl when she got turned and like, again, maybe she would redeem herself. Like there would be something for her or she would do, but none of that. It was just like, okay, well this is over. And his whole thing, the, the main villain, Mr. Kane Mm -hmm. just seems so silly. Like he's been on this planet for 3000 years and all these elaborate plans just to get like, you got cold hands, bro. Just walk around and you can just, Find the dragon yourself. Cold hands the dragon, man. Like he's gonna put it on old uh, uh, Blix Blinks. <laughs> What's his name? Glitz. Glitz. He's gonna let old Glitz with his fade top, like walk. Yeah. And you know he's got a single uh, earring, right? Yeah, Glitz, stud. Just a little, little, half like half a quarter carat stud. Yep. This is definitely <laughs> '80s. Uh, he's in Trans Am. Uh, he's gonna try. Like he's gonna let him do it and try to get this thing. It's like come right. on, cold hands. 3,000 years you can't figure out how to find this dragon? Nope. This is dumb. <laughs> <laughs> okay, speaking of dumb, and we alluded to this before, so they're going off to look for the for the treasure. They've split up. Um, Glitz and the doctor together. The doctor's wandering around, finds a railing right, at the edge of an ice cliff. Yep. Just climb, climb and down. Because when you get to a railing, you want to just the first slowly thing you do. lower yourself down until... I don't know. I don't know how I'm gonna get back up. And then look at your feet dangling, and Cliff. What was he thinking? So okay, first of all, I was like, well, why is he even climbing over the railing? So I was like, okay, so maybe on the map he figured out it's actually off the path. You have to go over this. This that's the fastest way to get there. Fine. But there's no so he has path to go over the railing. where you underneath. Because there, because it, because there was a railing going along the edge. So maybe that just didn't lead you there. So you had to go over it. Fine. Okay. But he saw the distance from the rail from the the edge of the cliff to the ground. How did he think he was going to get down? Well, I don't understand any of this because, it first off, is it just a pun to be a cliffhanger on a cliffhanger? Yeah, I mean, I must be. Who can, I mean, why then, else would then, you do that? But uh, then Glitz, right? Uh, yes, he did he it. Doesn't he just walk down to the bottom and catch him? <laughs> no, 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 no. So I, was there a spiral staircase they off don't, the screen? Sh- they don't show it because there's no freaking way they, he could have saved him. There's no way. he's The doctor is suspended Hanging by the end of his umbrella, yeah, what looks like an abyss, easily several stories above the bottom of this chasm, 
And then, so he's just dangling there. Glitz is, comes over the, ah, you got yourself in a fine fix. Yeah, yeah. And, and then he's, he's at the, help the next scene, he's at the bottom. And the next scene, they're at the bottom, and he's climbing down on his shoulders, and they do this whole physical physical thing, right. which was actually kind of funny. Um, no, it makes no freaking sense. This is, that's Maybe the thing the I was referring to. Maybe the doctor was committing suicide. Huh? Oh, Maybe it was a very a dark special episode. episode of Doctor Who. That's and that's dark. why the ice woman was there haunting his spirits. And you can still hear so her. So he actually died at that point. Late at night. Yeah, the rest of the story is just is is him dying. It is his brains with all the electrical is right. It doesn't make any like that <sighs> that scene sense. was because there's a previous scene where the monster comes and there's a screaming. We talked about it. Yeah. That's your classic cliffhanger. Yeah. Right. There's the a moment. monster, yep. someone screaming. Yep. This was like just goofy. Like and like it it's almost goofy. like a it like a clown. Like you had said that's it's yes. kind of like you know, it's like a circuit. It's like a Mr. Bean type thing, and then yes. he's hanging. Ooh, and then and he, he was pulling faces the whole time. He was do, really doing a lot with his face. Oh, 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 what are we gonna? Right. Yeah, it's I mean, not a cliff. It was very goofy. Right. It was not like a yeah. cliffhanger type ending, and no, it makes but it was it a makes cliffhanger. No sense. But at least the little girl drinks milkshakes. Uh, yeah, that's fine. With her, you know, knee deep in the blood of her family. <laughs> <laughs> and she's a she's a big part of the story. They keep kind coming back of. to her so many times. Over, she's dressing up her teddy bear, covering it up. And she must be the around niece and of somebody at the BBC, right? I don't. Uh, right? Yes. That, Daddy, I want to be in Doctor Who. All I right. And like, because there's this, there's so many shots of her just smiling and looking just at the camera, shots. and it's, it's yeah. like, all right. I when guess. the TARDIS first appears, she smiles. She's like, oh, the tar- the thing appears. Yeah. I it. <sighs> Anyway, okay. she grows up to be the doctor's daughter. It's the same. Oh my god! You didn't realize amazing. it. It was Peter Davison's daughter. Yeah, this is pretty good. Um, no, I don't know if that's true. I don't. No, think that's that. not, that's <laughs> a, I like it though. I'm gonna go with it. Um, so, uh, what else did we did we, did what we else cover? We got? The whole what thing? else we got here? I mean, so did you enjoy the comedy pairing of the doctor and Glitz together? No, a lot of physical humor. No, not as much. I did okay. enjoy <laughs> the comedy pairing of the guard and the doctor who have that philosophical discussion that i to me i love that because i liked how absurd it was and that they kept going with it and it went on like longer than you thought it should have gone on yep but it works because it went on that long and i that felt very monty monty python like well speaking of monty python yes i I liked that that. i liked that don't you think the sculptor um, that was doing the, the ice, yes, he, ice was very... was, he was he was the it's man from the beginning of Monty Python's Flying Circle Circus. The guy that he was all in, no, but that's okay. exactly right, what, that's he what looked you like thought. Like, all, right. It's yeah. Uh, so yeah, a lot of Monty Python feel throughout that. Yeah, that that philosophical thing was unexpected because I thought he was just going to cause a distraction. But then that guy's just dying to have a conversation about the yeah, semiotic and that was very of funny. I found that very text. funny. Philosophical text, like it was, it was funny. Yeah, and it and it ends again on a goofy moment of the doctor being speechless when he's um, confronted with this philosophical argument. Was, right, I like that. Uh, the doctor cute. and Glitz. To answer your first question, I don't. Not so much. I, they're okay together, but I think I'm done. I would. They I'll be happy not hard. to see him ever again. Yeah, How's that? I, I agree. I, no, totally, totally feel the same. You know, although there is a comfort, I think, in just having seen so many of these shows now where I'm like, oh, I know who that guy is. So it's like, oh, OK. What I like about it, I don't think it was entirely successful, but I like that we got to see Ms. McCoy do a lot of physical humor throughout, whether it was with glitz and climbing down over his shoulders and climbing through his yes. legs and coming up or as he's walking through the ice caves and sliding around on the ice and does kind of like pratfalls, like kind of yeah. off camera, he does these pratfalls. I like that he got, and, and mugging to the camera, making all the faces, because that is a defining feature, I think, of this incarnation of the Doctor, especially coming off of the immediate previous Doctor of Colin Baker, where was just so unlikable and so pompous that we get that, that, um, uh, contrast of the characters. I think that I think that works really well. So whether whether or not specifically him and Glitz works together, we at least get to see um, those traits coming out of McCoy, which yeah, gotcha. it's, it's something different. It's kind of fun because otherwise he's pretty much a standard kind of doctor. There's not a whole lot yeah, no, no. That's him. definitely become you know he's becoming clownish, uh, very much I guess like Troughton a little bit. 
um, but more so, more more, more so. exaggerated. Especially since we didn't get to see as many of the second Doctor stories, so maybe he was very much like that, but we didn't get to see it. I think Troughton had a much more serious side. Yeah, this is um, this is more yeah. um, almost silly kids, silly, and I can understand clowny. why people hate this show. Well, not this, that they hate the show, when they, they hate this era that it, yeah. it becomes a kid show. You, we've gotten that a lot from people's feedback. I kind of like. I mean, and I, I don't. I don't have a problem with that. I mean, I think that's a lot of what New Who is right now as well. Is is playing to the kids uh, as well. I thought it was third wave. Depending feminism. on the stories. Oh, is that what that's it what is? I that's I, I had heard doctor. that. So uh, that's what I was under the assumption. I read that I online. So we got uh we also got a little backstory more of Ace. So Ace was a 16 year old <coughs> high high school student um, on Earth. Yeah, she's um, sort of like a, the Peter Quill of the Doctor Who universe uh, for fans of Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, oh, he, she's picked yes. up by. A time, a, ti- a time storm, storm, a time storm. I don't. But she's like very nonchalant about it. A time storm opened up and whisked, whisked me away here. Like, wait, go back and tell me more about the time yeah, storm. There's no other further, further questions. Mel doesn't Nothing. pursue. Doesn't that. care. It's all Mel fine. Mel literally doesn't totally care. Fine. And her doesn't parents matter. are not her parents because well, they, they wouldn't have given her a name like what was her Dorothy. actual name? Dorothy. Dorothy. Yeah. Which is well, a mean, Wizard of Oz storm, thing, right? Wizard of Oz. Thing, yeah, of course. Yes. Right. yes. Okay. Um, but she, we're on the same page. Of, between, we're on the same page of cracking that mystery. I see. <laughs> <laughs> really oh, Dan, you didn't realize that her name was Dorothy, and she was picked up by a storm uh, and taken to another. That's why she kept calling Mel Toto the whole time. Um, she, but she doesn't uh, miss her is, family. I'm, like there's, there's no. She got very angry talking about it at the beginning. She's like, I, I don't have a mother or father. I've never had a mother and father. I'm just me. And then later she and Ace are, are sitting there before she tells her her name was Dorothy and kind of gives her some backstory that she was a waitress and she was doing the same thing over and over again but didn't feel like it was truly her, that she was dropped down from another planet and that this was not really her life. Um, so she been dreaming, <coughs> looking at the stars and imagining where she really came yes. from. But then she gets whisked away in this time storm and irony ends up being a waitress again without a dream to right. look towards. Right. Which was now actually, I thought that was one of the best sure. moments I think of the entire story was that moment of aces. Yeah. The rest of the story was okay. That was the, probably the heart of it for me. I thought for sure it, she was going to be an orphan. And that's w- – but then when she's – like, I don't think that ever came out, so. right? No. Because it makes no, sense. No. She's in an orphanage she looking parents, up yeah. in the sky and then a time storm takes her She felt like away. an orphan. Yeah. Maybe it will be revealed later that she really wasn't Earthling. Who knows? And that's why the time storm picked her up. I, I don't know. It's very – it we'll was just out. a little strange the way she said she had no parents and then – she had parents, and they named her Dorothy, so but they, they couldn't her, have been her parents. And then but it's they like, weren't her parents in her head. They weren't like she didn't feel the connection. But at that point, I was like, she's mentally, de- uh, she's got mental problems. She, she needs to be help. taken to a hospital. She That's she why she's dumping her. milkshakes on people. Yeah. She doesn't know how to relate. Nope. Um, yeah. So, so anything else with this? Because I guess we should jump into Mel's departure. Let's just departure. jump to getting rid of Mel. <laughs> that, <laughs> Let's just get rid of Mel. I he have was mixed, the, one of the worst. I have mixed fe- feelings about this. Do it. I will start with it starting off as the worst goodbye to a companion I've ever seen. Horrible. Where Mel is just trying to have her moment to talk, and the doctor's cutting her off, not she letting her talk. She to say one thing to him, whatever it is, and he's like, fingers in the ears, la, 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 shut up to yes. her the entire time. And okay. it's kind of awful, and you feel really bad awful. for her. But yes. then the doctor... In what I think was very good acting on Sylvester McCoy's part, starts almost breaking down himself in not yeah. being able to understand. You know, he understands time. I shouldn't say that he doesn't understand time, <laughs> but that these people yes. come and go, and he's constantly going in and out of time. You know, yes. in the past, and the future, and the present, or whatever. You know, one minute you're coming, then you're going, then you're here, and what is time? And he's and I haven't sort met of you struggling yet, yeah, with yeah, this, yeah. and he's saying goodbye to her now, but he could see her again. Yeah. So for him, it's 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 almost meaningless. So what is a yeah. goodbye? And and she jumps onto that, and she attaches herself to that because she decides to hitch a ride with with old uh, Blinksy. Oh, glitzy face. <laughs> glitzy. Blinks. He's calling him Blinks because <laughs> my uh, autocorrect on my notes made it Blinks. Um, Actually, I think in one moment he does misspeak and says his name is Sabalon Blix. It's possible. When he's like yeah, yeah. I go back and watch it again. So but it she's really gonna like ride, she's gonna be, you know, uh 
sitting shotgun in this, his little sidecar in his space uh, guess so. copter. That was a weird thing. But she says, yeah. like, I'm going to write you a note. And I'll throw you a bottle. And he's like, how will you you'll know where I am? It. You know, you'll find it in time. And it's like, okay, yeah. well, what is time? You know, these people come and go, but they don't really yeah. leave. We can always rewatch the stories. Nothing's gone. We're, we're preserved. Like a, a note in a bottle Whoa, on the sea of time. Dude. So I liked that part. I liked yeah. the way the doctor delivered those lines about time and what is the beginning and the end and you're coming and but you're going at the same time. But the fact that it started off so angry really put a damper on that for me. And I, I agree with everything you're saying, and I think you're actually reading into it more than than I did. I mean, you're you're getting a lot more out of it than I did, but I and I, I appreciate what you're saying. But the fact that he just started off so dismissive and so uh, angry with her, and it it just ruined the rest of the moment for me, honestly. Yeah, well, yeah, no, he really starts hard. with, it's basically, she says she doesn't want to go anymore, and he's like, you're dead to me, essentially. Yeah. And, and yeah. But yeah. I felt like it starts like that, and then he opens up. And with over the course of his thing, then he kind of be, he he shows that he's sort of vulnerable in that way. Yeah. In that he doesn't. It's like, what is all of this? So yeah, I mean, I wish they just the I wish they just started there. I wish started that moment where he's having a hard time letting her go and figuring out, you know, expressing the fact that how time feels to him and why it's so frustrating for him, as opposed to having to start off being petulant at the at the beginning and 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 hostile. If they just skipped that, I would have enjoyed that so much more. <laughs> Excuse me. But that's just me. What do I No, know? I, I agree with that part. Um, so then we also – but we have her going off with – got to forgive that? me. I can't remember where Mel's from. She's not from Earth, is she? Because it's hard – Mel is – if we, were, we, we, we go back, ah, Mel was introduced – from from the t- trial of the Time Lord of yes. a thing that happened in the future. So we never yes. saw her – get brought on she just she's was just, already, she's already a, companion. a companion yeah and then later you said you i think you said you read well, somewhere shoot. that they showed how they made those timelines match up but i don't remember where she's is she an earthling do they say she's from earth she must be because she recognizes what what ace is talking about so you know talking about her taking her a levels oh you're from earth and okay so, so we must, assume she's so yes. she's probably an earthling Oh shoot! So I she, feel real bad. I'm sorry. All of you fans were screaming at no, us fine. right it, now. It, it, we're like, probably oh, is it obvious, is. or who cares if it's I not obvious? Remember. But why doesn't she want to go? She doesn't want to go back to Earth. So I, I kind of like that she still wants to oh. explore. She hailed from Pease Potter's West Sussex at the turn of the 21st century, and that's but that's from prose uh, or something, or it's from prose and audio. It's actually not from the TV right. uh, so stories at all. So we're it, not okay. We didn't so know. they didn't even tell. They never you. said. Yeah, but I do like the fact that she still wants to go on adventures. But it does yes. seem a little weird that she just doesn't want to go on adventures Yo, with the him. doctor. Right? She's like, "Oh no, it's... I still want to travel. I still want to right. see stuff, yeah. just not with you." Not with you. So I guess in that regard, maybe the doctor was as cold as he needed to be. Yeah, maybe. No, he didn't know that she was. <clears> and it comes go out of nowhere. At point. It really <clears> did. All of a sudden, there, she's in the TARDIS, and she goes, "I guess it's time for me to go," which is kind of how how you would quit a job. In that sense, right. it felt very real. Like it was very hyper real <laughs> where you drop. No, those you just don't show up the next day for work and then you're you're out. Right, right, right. I uh no, I it it did feel like it came out of the blue. And it was just a weird moment overall. It it was one of the less satisfying ones. Even one one of those really, really strange goodbyes for a companion like Sarah Jane, where it's just like, Oh, you're just gonna drop her off now. That felt at least poignant in right. a way. Yeah, this is this um, is like this now just, when we're done with a companion they get paired off with a male companion, or if we're done with a female companion, they they seem to get paired off. You know, we saw Perry get married to the yep. uh, Flash Gordon guy. I can't remember the guy's name. So she's with some king now. Mel is with um, yep. Blinks. I don't remember what happened to um, not Tila. What's her name? The Amazonian I don't, one. Oh, Leela. No, Leela. she gets married. Leela gets married. So she gets married. So it seems like yep. a lot of these uh, companions wow, just so get married. that's so crazy. Get awful. Married <laughs> it's really horrible. <laughs> Although we shouldn't say that. I mean, Mel's not married. She's just adventuring. They seem Is like they're going to butt heads. Oh, it's going to happen. It's probably going to happen. It's a Sam and it's Diane thing happening. It's probably It's moonlighting. Yeah, will they, won't they? And when, when <laughs> they, won't they, if they ever do, the show's over. So uh, <laughs> stay tuned for whatever spinoff that's going to be. Ooh, and then Mel... 
also is the reason why Ace is involved. So not only is she, she's like literally breaking up with him and then saying like, well, check out this new one. You want me to help so, you out uh, hey, got I, Ace here? She's got her nowhere to you. go. She's a yeah. cutter. Wink, uh, wink. <laughs> She's not a cutter. I don't know if she's a cutter. I'm just saying she has. <laughs> there's a lot of stuff going on, and that's how she feels in control. Ace that's, needs some help, and the doctor, she's, he's a doctor. He can help her. Well, she almost uh, branded herself. I mean, there was that part where she could have got the ring. No, um coin. Don't take the ring, Laura. Oh, it was a coin. <laughs> I'm glad you went for a Twin Peaks instead of Lord of the Rings. That's yeah. that's very you. I'm glad that happened. Uh, so, yeah, um, so then she's like, you know, and I kind of liked that moment. Yeah, that was that was a pretty good because moment. of how then, happy you know, she was. Yeah, and he and he really, um, uh, Kane somehow really was able to read into what would be appealing to her and the way that he kind of played her emotions uh, so beautifully. And I think that you really saw that in Ace that she really wanted. She was she was torn that she she could have gone for what he was offering, but no, she pulled out her can of deodorant and blew them all up. Yep. Um, is Ace. there anything else that we need to cover in the overall story? No, there, I think we get there, it all. Did it bother you nope. how blatant? Okay, that's surprising. <laughs> that I was, I was bothered. No, what how was blatant it? the ripoff of the dragon creature design was? How how of much of a what? A ripoff of Alien. The creature design was for the dragon. It was like knobby spine, claws, big disc head. It, it was the alien creature. It was the but alien creature budget. if you went to a uh, like one of those uh, St. Leo's Party fair City. and they, they yeah. wheeled out the uh, carno, carny yeah. folk of the alien ride and that's the thing that popped Exactly. Out. I'm saying it's the off-brand version. It was yeah. not as well done, obviously, as a feature film. Uh, this is a BBC budget at the lean, but it had laser eyes. Show. Now, laser What's eyes it? is not a thing that the it's alien or the xenomorph uh, for it's you not. super fans out there. Uh, yeah, so there was uh, no laser. They added the, the laser mouth. eyes. Yeah, it didn't have the second mouth. Um, but that, I mean, that was that was obviously an, let's just call it an homage to Alien. We had the Star Wars Space Cantina. We had Superman Fortress of Solitude. Yeah, it's very. It was and very derivative. We had of Raiders them. of the Lost Ark Melting Face. Yes, I, I'm glad you said that because so we got all of those things. No, because again, the end of this makes no sense. <laughs> he just nope. <laughs> again, suicide is a. I guess I'm going to kill myself. I, Ian Briggs was going through a dark period, I think, when he was writing this, because all of a sudden he's like, you know what? Lights out, and he nothing lo- matters. He just puts up his <laughs> blinds and stares into the sun and melts, and everybody goes home. Yeah, like yeah, there's yeah. no. He basically just kills himself. Yeah, his 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 lady friend killed herself, and then her statue melts in a previous scene, and then he decides <laughs> to kill himself and melt. So it came full circle, I guess. It did. Uh, to, uh, I melt with you. Uh, I melt with you. Slowly fading up in the background. No, but you're right. It is very derivative, and that is perfect. Yes, Raiders of the Lost Homage-y. Ark. Homage-y, right at I the guess, end. but yeah. Uh, but I think, I mean, okay. I, have you had anything else to say about the no, story? No, all that I, I said, think I, I, still, covered all I still of that. enjoyed it. Um, I still, it's not like one of the ones that I would say. It's, it, was, it wasn't a time flight or anything. Uh, and I think Uncle. you know what I think it is, and, I, and we're harping on this a lot, but the fact that it's only three uh, episodes long yeah. makes yeah. So, sort of anything fun because it's not overly drawn out, and you're not right. with this with it for as long. You know, you're not. Oh, it's not a two hour thing. Yeah, no, it it. I can't imagine how much it would have disliked this story had it been an extra twenty two minutes. It would have just. I no. It was it was fine as it was, and you're right. You can kind of get through all the things that don't make any sense because it it it's not so flabby with all the extra stuff that it needs. All right, well, I think we got it, Eric. We have a lot of other things to discuss. We do. We have uh... beyond Dragonfire. Oh. First and foremost, what do you think uh, Wait, we should be doing for our next story on our? Uh, oh page? yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna change right it. Let's change it. But we're, we're we finally we you know folks we're we're following right now, the conceit of the show has changed. Hulu doesn't have any of these things. Blah blah blah. You know all the story. Um, so we're watching what we can on BritBox, which unfortunately doesn't have any of the Terry Nation Dalek stories. Except now, as of the beginning, uh, the end of October, Remembrance of the Daleks is now on. Yeah. So we're gonna uh, do a Remembrance of the Daleks. Perfect. Yeah. Remembrance of the Daleks is coming on. It was like the it was perfect, recommended. 
too. Perfect timing for it because that that is the chronological next story as well. So we're just going to jump in that, which means we're going to hit every uh, McCoy story yeah. through the end of this run, which is the first we've done for a Doctor, which is crazy. No, yeah, it's the first time we'll have every, you're right, every, every story. story. And probably <laughs> not, Good the or one, bad. not the Don't ideal doctor. I think at the end of this, we're all going to put that lampshade up and just melt our faces. <laughs> just, just the, Lights end, out, the end of us. Uh, but yeah, no, all let's right. do that. Someone so wrote that. us. That, that'll be the next one. That that's remember, available. We'll put that on the Twitter. We'll make sure you guys all remember that. But that'll be the next thing coming out. So you can watch that along with us on the Brit Box or on your DVDs if you have that yep. handy. We got a lot of feedback from you folks this time. And we thank you very much for that every time. Uh, we got a bunch of emails. Uh, let me just run through these quickly. Uh, Paul W. Uh, wrote to us and says, uh, speaking specifically of this story, although the special effects are awful in parts, I enjoy Dragonfire as a story. Uh, four stories in it, it feels like McCoy is settling into the role of the Doctor and making his mark. I think that's right. That's this clownish thing. I totally I see that. <coughs> um, it's great to see Glitz back again. Great's a strong word. Uh, as I love the character and the way he's forced uh, to work with the Doctor, the look on his face is hilarious when the Doctor suggests that Mill stays to keep him on the straight and narrow. That's kind of nice. Uh, topping it all off, we get a new companion whose first response to most problems is to blow things up using homemade explosives, a refreshing change from previous female companions who tended to scream all the time. Agreed, Paul. We're on the same page with all of that. Uh, we got an email letting us know that we have to remember to the dogs. So thank you, David H., for uh, sending that our way. Um, I did get an email from Bitbox letting me know that as well. So that was everyone's trying to tell us. Do that as the next story. So we are listening. Uh, next, we got an uh, email from uh, Tim B. Uh, titled a- uh, Ace Professor. Oh, yeah. She kept calling him Professor and then yeah. corrected her And then the he's end, like, you know what? My, I'm, I'm the doctor. I'm, I'm the I doctor. hope she keeps it up, though. I hope Knock it, it off. becomes... <laughs> A thing? Yeah. That's cute. Uh, Hey, fellas. I'm enjoying watching the Seventh Doctor episodes with you. My knowledge of classic Who stops after number six, and I've only seen a couple of sevens on VHS. One of those is the very classic Remembrance of the Daleks, which Britsbox just made available. Thank you for pointing it out, Tim. Uh, I should think you should take a break from the schedule to review it. Um, Do that, and you will have watched the complete run of of, uh, the Seventh Doctor. What a bucket list (laughs) accomplishment. There we go. We did it. Yep, there we go. Uh, Of the Seventh Run so far, I've enjoyed Dragonfire the most. It's known for having the worst uh, cliffhanger in Who history at the end of Part 1. Yeah, we uh-huh. discussed that. We've noted. Uh, see, the Doctor's last classic companion introduced is pretty special. I like Ace and Mel together. Uh, I thought they were interesting as a pairing. Uh, I really didn't think Mel was all that bad. Also, that dragon costume was uh, great, and the poor man's creature cantina cracked me up. See, that's, that was... There's the, you got you, the cantina. Tim, you pointed that out. You put that in that, that bug in my ears. So that's all I can see when you said that. Um, keep up the good work. I'm thinking about doing the remembrance next. We're going to do it. Okay. We will do it. And... Last, a uh, fan mail from Thomas M says, "Hello, I'm a new listener of the podcast, and I enjoy uh, and I'm enjoying each episode. Will you be reviewing New Who and the spinoffs? Also, uh, 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 also serials you haven't reviewed or missed out. Um, I did reply to you in that email, Tim. Uh, but next week we're going to cover Boo Berry, uh, and we're going to get into. Um... Oh, I'm sorry, I was doing serial. I was. Got, oh, I see. Uh, I see what you're doing there. That was that so was terrible. Classic. That was awful, a good joke. awful, awful. Um, this is as you guys are probably point. aware, if you've been <laughs> listening uh, from the beginning, <laughs> we're just going to finish up this run through probably with the oh, uh, terrific Eighth Doctor Fox TV movie. Yeah, uh, and then we're gonna jump back in the beginning. Assuming Eric and I haven't committed murder suicide, we're gonna jump back and hit the highlights of the previous doctors that we weren't able to get to at the beginning because they weren't available. Yep, after but now they are right after survival. We'll do which is on April tenth of next year. We'll do the movie, and <laughs> of then next year. all of the round two stuff. So if there's more stuff you want to add to our round two, which is on the schedule page, please do. As far as new who that was mentioned too. No. Just in, like we did in the beginning. I'll try not to rant so long about uh, angry YouTube videos, but we'll probably... Yeah, that's going to be a feature a, every week. Yeah, anytime there's a new... Either the show comes back or if there's yeah. a Christmas special, which I guess maybe yeah. there's not going to be, but maybe there is. I don't know. We, we probably usually do mention it, but we try to keep yeah. the reviews focused on the Focus classic, on classic era. So those are the emails. Thank you, folks, for letting us know. Um, obviously, we always let you guys know what story we're going to do in advance, and we solicit your feedback on the Twitters. Um, and thank you guys for responding to us. So uh, the great and wonderful podcast, World, in, uh, World Enough in Time, wrote to us to say, 
of this story, uh, the best of season 24, but maybe that's not saying much. Cheap studio feel, but a great villain and support from Rocky Horror's Magenta. You guys, no, someone else mentioned that. I, but yes, that. Thank you for putting bringing that to our attention. Uh, good to meet Ace, even though she starts off as a caricature. But how keen must the doctor be to get uh, to get rid of Mel? Uh, a future of carrot juice for glitz. Mm. Which is pretty good. That's pretty oh, good. Burned. I can imagine him on an uh, exercise bike drinking carrot <laughs> juice for, for the rest of eternity. Poor guy. So thank you for that, uh, guys. Um, and keep on doing what you're doing. Um, our good friend Chris uh, wrote to us, things to notice. Glitz's cross hatching, which Eric referred to as the the fade with a what it written in the back of his head. I like it. Um, number two, a place called Ice World where no one is war- wearing warm clothing. That is a yes. good point. Very curious. And number three, Ace immediately overshadows Mel. Uh, he goes on to say he's interested in our take on Ace. I hope you got a full dose of what we think about Ace. Um, he says, I think the best description is she's kind of a Leela after a run of fairly ineffectual female companions like Mel and Perry, she quickly muscles Mel off the screen. Uh, even if she's not really settled into her role yet. I think that's fair. And lastly he says <laughs> the attempted catchphrase ace, uh, could really <laughs> so, disappear, but otherwise she starts well and grows into something great. I hope like, it does stop. disappear. Maybe it's not going to disappear. Stop trying to make fetch happen. Um, and then lastly, our friend Bernard says, um, a great guest cast. Alas, Bonnie is uh, Bonnie is Bonnie is girl fully out of time. Okay, Bonnie is girl fully out of time and so glaringly out of place. Yes, she didn't seem to have much to do in this one at all. Uh, glad they got rid of Mel so they can sh- uh, so the show can enter the 1990s with Ace, who's a bit uh, raw as of yet. Still, it's season 24, so most of it flops despite everyone's efforts. And that cliffhanger, oh dear. It's evident in the script that uh, and on screen that Ace has previously had a one night stand with Glitz. Think on that. I, I don't. Didn't, see I don't it, remember that, and but I, I mean, it's, it's not possible. to see that. I mean, maybe they have, they have some that whole uh, bilge bag and and their head to head kind of fighting. Sure, maybe he was being protective of her, and that's why he didn't want her to go on the dragon hunt. Maybe I have a feeling but Bernard is going to see that. Tweet at you whatever the part is that. I would be clear. interested to yeah, find out then... what makes it uh, crystal clear that happened. But regardless, there, the relationship between Glitz and Ace uh, b- butting heads was actually pretty fun. We didn't really mention that before. So thank you for pointing that out. And last, the most important thing, Eric's favorite part of any show yep. is the iTunes reviews. ITunes and we have two review. new ones. One from the UK. Paul Waring in the UK says... Uh, of our show, a great trip through classic Who, an enjoyable trip through the classic series of Doctor Who, feels like two mates having a, a laid-back chat about what they like without being scripted. You're wrong, though. This is entirely scripted. We work for weeks between each show, writing out the dialogue beat for beat. Lastly, um, this is from Mechanical Harvest, gives us five stars as well. It says, uh, funny and often hilarious. I'm glad I found... Uh, I'm glad... I found this show. It's made me want to... <laughs> iTunes review. <laughs> We're doing it live, folks. Keep it in. Keep it in. Uh, I'm glad I found this show. It's made me want to rewatch the stories I've seen so many times over the years. It's funny and often hilarious uh, to hear these guys try to make sense of something that doesn't make sense, just like this story. Uh, the show is never boring. Imagine Patton Oswalt and Anderson Cooper doing a drunk history version of Doctor Who, and that's this show Great job, guys. I'm Wait, I was going to say you're, you're Anderson clearly Cooper. Clearly, Patton Oswalt. I'm I'm going to be a silver fox when I grow up, so I'm clearly Anderson. Yeah, Dan Cooper. Dan does, as someone pointed out, have the sexiest voice in podcasting. Did you get something like that? I, I I'm glad you brought that up. <sighs> I, I had that put. I embroidered that on a pillow, and I sleep on it every night. Well, we don't know. Maybe he thing. thought that you were the Patton Oswalt. I'm clearly not the Patton. I'm Oswald. happy just you're... being me. <laughs> right, <laughs> that's not true. No, uh, honestly, so I'm that, just happy again. Reviews. That was a very nice review. That was very nice. Guys. And thank, thank you. you so much. If you guys want to get in touch with us, you can tweet at us at uh, T O D W Show T O D W Show on Twitter. Uh, also, the same on the Instagram. Let's we'll post our gifts on Facebook. It's facebook.com forward slash T O D W S. Yes, I got it. <laughs> uh, you can also email us. <laughs> 
And if you want to email us, you can email us at theolddoctorwhoshow at gmail.com and visit us at theolddoctorwhoshow.com where you can see our schedule of upcoming shows. Check out all of our past episodes. Uh, we also, for the past 30 or so, have been posting GIFs that I find amusing from each of the stories. So you can check those out and share those on your social medias or just uh, look at them and uh, drool at how beautiful they are. So do all those things. Oh, also, if you want to send us anything in the mail. Oh, yeah. Like, I love it. The PO you know, Box 2131. Red Bank, New Jersey, 07701. I haven't checked in a while. Well, you should check. Possible. You might have more mugs and drawings. Uh, yeah, so, uh, so uh, if free. you go to the schedule page, uh, you will see our next scheduled review is 12-5, December 5th. It's going to say Happiness Patrol right now, but as Dan said, it's going to be Remembrance to the Dal- Daleks. So hopefully by the time you are hearing this, I'll have updated it. We'll see about that. So, yeah, so that's it. Twelve five. So thank you, everyone. Thank you, everybody, for putting up with a what is going to be a very interesting non-edited version of the show. Good job. And, uh, done. Bye. Peace. <laughs> Wait, I did your thing. All right. Uh, I wasn't recording. I'll stop the world and melt with you. You've seen the difference and it's getting better all the time There's nothing you and I won't do I'll stop the world and melt with you A dream of better lives, the kind which never hates Trapped in a state of imaginary grace made a pilgrimage to save this human race Never comprehending the race that long gone by I'll stop the world and melt with you You've seen the difference and it's getting better all the time There's nothing you and I won't do Stop the world and melt with you The future's open